Good morning. Lovely sunny day for us today. I've got a, a verse that I'm going to read for us today. We've spoken every day about the love of God and the love that we can offer to him. And I came across this verse in John's second letter, just a few verses that he's written for this, this short letter. And he says this, and this is love that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you have heard from the beginning, his command is that you walk in love. So love and obedience go together. We'll talk about it later. But right now we're going to lift our voices in worship and then Pravin will open up a little more for us through Elijah. morning. Thank you for joining us this morning on the short thoughts on the life of Elijah. Our reading for today is from 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 7. It says sometime later the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. So our title for today is the brook dried up. Elijah the Tishabite. We find him at Cherith, where we find that God is protecting him as well as providing for him, and ultimately training him for the battle that lies ahead. One morning, Elijah noticed that the brook wasn't gushing over the rocks or running as freely as it had been in the days gone by. Since this stream of water was his lifeline, he checked it very carefully. Over the next few days, he washed, he washed it as it dwindled and dwindled 
and shrunk. Then one morning, he gets up and there is no water, only sand. The hot winds had soon evaporated even the dampness in the air. And before long, cracks appeared on the parched bed of the brook. No more water. The brook had dried up. Once thriving, now the brook dries up. Just recently, in this lockdown, my wife and I watched the animated version of Pilgrim's Progress. Isn't that what happened to John Bunyan in the 17th century in England? He preached against the godlessness of his day and the authorities, well, they put him in prison. His brook of opportunity and freedom dried up. But because Bunyan firmly believed that God was still alive and was at work, he turned that prison into a place of praise as he penned this most famous allegory, Pilgrim's Progress. It's definitely worth a watch if you haven't done it. But the brook dries up, but in no way it cancels out God's providential plan for Elijah. However, Elijah finds himself in a bit of a tough spot, a life-threatening spot. Hmm. Had God actually forgotten his faithful prophet? Do we feel like that sometimes? But wait a minute. The God who gives water can also withhold water. That's his sovereign right. My human brain tells me that once of uh, this faithful God of ours, my heavenly father, gives me water, well, he should never take it away. A job, wealth, health, provision and protection. Probably you can name some of your own. It wouldn't be, it, it just would not be fair. My language, it's not fair, God. But you know, he has every right. When we hit a tough spot, my tendency, and probably ours, is to feel abandoned, to become resentful, to think, how could God actually forget me and start blaming God. That's my human brain. It's definitely my human logic. Because according to the word of God, exactly the opposite is true. In times of testing, we're more than ever the real object of God's concern. In fact, even more at that time. God says, in the midst of our dried up brook, Isaiah chapter 49, verse 16, he says, see, I have engraved you in the palm of my hands. Also, God uses this wonderful image of a mother with a newborn baby in Isaiah chapter 49, verse 14 and 15. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, the Lord says, I will not forget. Here is the punch point, not God. He never forgets. He will never forget. We are permanently inscribed on the palm of his hand. Today, let this thought just go really, really deep 
in our hearts and in our minds. Elijah prayed that it would not rain. And that's exactly what was happening. No rain for three and a half years. The very thing he had prayed for was beginning to happen. By the way, it reminds me of my prayers. It says, Lord, make me a godly man. Lord, mold me into a man after your own heart. In the meantime, in my heart, I'm thinking, but do, Lord, don't hurt me too much. Lord, make me stable, long-suffering, and gracious. But don't remove too many of my comfort creatures, creature comforts. Lord, teach me faith. Make me strong, but don't let me suffer. Have you ever bargained with God like that? I have. We want instant maturity. Not that requires sacrifice or emotional pain or hardship. Elijah's time at Cherith was for developing towards maturity and was definitely not for comfort. During the time at Cherith, God had laid in Elijah a foundation of heroic courage and a new kind of confidence in his God. Essentially, essential, really needed that bit, that was really needed on the journey that lied ahead, lay ahead. Dry Brook, it was all about cutting away at Cherith. Elijah went to Cherith and emerged as a spokesman for God, a prophet. But he emerges from Cherith as a much, much deeper man of God, all because he was left beside a brook that eventually dried up. Alone, but never forgotten. Tested, but never abandoned. Amen.
The verse I read earlier on very much links obedience with love. Our call to love God because he loved us first. And we're experiencing the need to be obedient as a nation. The fact that we're given new rules that are alien to our natural instincts and yet for the safety of the nation we have to we have to go with the rules and in order to do that we have to trust the people who made them just in the same way that we have to trust God in love and just as Elijah was only given one instruction at a time he trusted God for the next one and therefore it all worked out as God had planned. So it's the same for us. God is challenging us to trust him, to obey him and to love him. And they're all intertwined. That lovely verse in, in Revelation declares, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. He doesn't say he might come in, he says he will. And remember, he keeps his word. Perhaps God's speaking that verse to you today. Let's pray. Lord, we pray again this morning for our nation. We pray, Lord, for wisdom for those who are making decisions, life and death decisions for many. And Lord, we pray that you will use the right people to get the result that is best for the nation. And I pray, Lord, that you will give us patience as we seek to obey these strange rules. Give us that sense of love, Lord, for each other, that we might not see need and not meet it where we can. Bless each one, Lord, who serves. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. See you tomorrow. Goodbye.